it's going to be hard for Joshua to cast Tasifu. If Tasifu stay in one place, or maybe they try to push Joshua back, I don't, I don't see, I don't see the way Tasifu could push Joshua back because Joshua is big, Tasifu is big. You know, understand? You know, you know, says Joshua, Joshua, you know, says Joshua, it's a, it's a big move, it's a big move backward, defense and offense. Yeah, yeah. you can fight backwards. Defense, yeah, yeah, defense and offense. Yeah. But Tasifu, Tasifu is not to fight defense or offense. What I mean is, Tasifu doesn't get knockout power. It's just, it's just like to punish boxers to finish the fight. He just try, uh, just try to frustrate you. That's Tasifu you fight. That's how Tasifu you fight. He just like to frustrate you, scatter your plan. That's what Tasifu is fight. That's what Tasifu is this fight. But Joshua, once Joshua left the right hand, I don't think he's going to survive. That's my, that's my opinion. That's my prediction. Salute to Boxing Block Center and Ajagba for the prediction. He just took over what he said for those who didn't quite grasp what Ajagba was saying. He was saying he feels both men are able to box on the front and back foot. Both men being AJ and Fury. Say so they both can box on the front and back foot. But one problem he has with that is he doesn't see Fury being able to push Joshua backwards. He doesn't think Fury is strong enough to push Joshua backwards. And also, another problem he has with that, with both men fighting either way, is if Joshua goes on the back foot, he's also able to land the knockout punch because he has a knockout power. If Joshua comes on the front foot, he's still able to land the knockout punch because he has the knockout power. So either way he sees the fight going, whoever is on the front or back foot, he still sees Joshua knocking Fury out with a right hand. Essentially, that's what I gather from what he was saying. He also said Fury doesn't have knockout power. And yes, I do agree with that. Obviously, he's a heavyweight. Every heavyweight can hit to, you know, to a certain degree. But um, compared to his peers and, you know, the Dylan Whites, the, the Wilders, the AJs, the Perfectians, Fury is not a puncher. Knocking out Wilder doesn't make you a puncher. Wilder's been wobbled and, you know, and rocked by lesser, lesser, lesser heavyweights. It's it's not really it, that wasn't a shock to me personally. His chin has always been suspicious to me. Wilder that is. Anyways, so yeah, knocking out Wilder doesn't all of a sudden mean Fury is not a knockout puncher. It's not a knockout puncher. It doesn't possess knockout power. So I do agree with Jagba there. AJ is the puncher in this fight. So yeah, if if a knockout was to occur, it's more likely to be. AJ landing that knockout blow, not Fury. So, I say that to say this Fury has to fight on the back foot. <laughs> I do believe he has to he has to stay away from the punches. He cannot let AJ land. Because AJ is not looking to land just the single shots like Wilder does. He's trying to land combinations. He's trying to clean you out. So Fury has to stay away. He can't come forward. That would be a suicide mission. It's a recipe for disaster to call Mike Tyson. Obviously, people are going to bring up the fact that um, AJ was knocked out by Andy Ruiz. Well, you have to take into consideration the dimensions of both men. Andy is what six feet. Tyson is six nine. You can't you can't really compare the two. If you want to compare punching power, I I personally give Andy the edge based on the speed factor. Andy's has really fast hands so i'll give him the edge not even the edge i think I, i'm just gonna say i think andy hits harder than tyson fury so yeah the, the opportunity andy um created to land that punch on aj the height advantage is what created the opportunity for him during that exchange well height disadvantage whatever you want to call it however you want to look at it i think if if fury was to exchange with aj the way ruiz did in the third round AJ is going to come out on top. 9 out of 10 times. Okay, maybe 8 out of 10 times AJ comes out on top. If Fury steps in the fire like Andy did in that third round, I see Fury getting knocked out. I don't see Fury doing what Andy did. It's not happening. Fury is not as fast. For me, Fury has to revert back to his his natural ways, his, his normal boxing. Get back to your boxing and yeah, don't exchange with this Joshua guy. Just, you know. 
stay away from him. Now onto a Jaguar. Hit the scene with the PBC, knocking out everyone left, right, and center. You also the viral footage of um, what's the guy Curtis Harper, who refused to hop out the ring after the bell rang. As soon as the bell rang, the guy hopped out the ring. He did not want to feel any of those punches. So yeah, that really did a lot for a Jaguar's profile. There was a lot of hype surrounding him, and then then came the Demarizan fight. Or what was his name? Ali Demarizan. Yeah, Ajagba went the distance with this guy, former Olympian. If I, if I, I think the Demarizan guy was a former Olympian. And yeah, Ajagba goes the distance with him. People were a bit, uh, a bit, a bit concerned because Ajagba didn't look great in the fight either. And then came the Yago Kalatse fight. Ajagba gets dropped by Kalatse. Kalatse is a, it's a journeyman that most prospects go through. Most guys knock him out, but he does not drop. Does not drop people the way it did a Jagba. So he dropped a Jagba right after a Jagba dropped him. So he was actually hurt when he dropped a Jagba. So that raised people's concern further. People were more concerned about Jagba. I put myself, me, me, and people too. I was concerned too after that. So he got the job done. Knocked out Kalatse in the in the fifth round. The, the corner, no, no, the corner for in the towel in the fifth round. And yeah, he got the job done. And then since then he still not looked great. And then after that he fights after the Kalatsi fight, he fights Razvan Kujanu. He knocks him out in the ninth round. Razvan Kujanu is is past it by now. I remember I think a few months, maybe about eight months, nine months before the Jagba fight, Kujanu just got knocked out by by Dubois in two rounds. So Ajag he was winning every round, but he he, he knocked him out in the ninth round. Which was way worse than how Dubai did. So that <laughs> raised people's cons concerns up further. But that that was his last fight with the PBC. He left the PBC after that fight. So, you know, me in particular, I was I was happy when he left the PBC because he was starting to get, you know, stagnant over there. He, he was starting to look worse. So he left the PBC fighting off and rice. He still doesn't look great. He goes a distance with Jonathan Rice. Still doesn't look great. New coach K Karoma. According to Ajagba, they're working on head movements and footwork mainly with a new coach. He didn't get enough time to prepare for the Jonathan Wright's fight because he was in between moving and he had a whole lot of stuff going on with the contract termination with the PBC and moving over to ESPN top rank. So he pinned the, the poor performance against Jonathan Rice on the um, promotional contract conflict and moving houses and all of the, the personal issues he was going through so i guess i guess as a fan i'm just gonna draw a line in the sand and say okay now a jaguar is about to move on with his career he put up a post on instagram calling out a whole bunch of unrealistic heavyweights i don't see any of those fights happening most of them are pbc heavyweights who he's just left and the other ones like joe joyce um Joe Joyce got the Usyk fight, he's got Joe Joyce in the poster, he's got Usyk in the poster, they, they're both fighting each other, so that's not happening. He's got who else? He's got who else in the poster? Dubois. Dubois is coming off his eye situation, so Dubois is definitely not fighting him. He's got um, Gerald Washington, PBC heavyweight. PBC is probably not going to want to do business with him. So yeah, so I'm not too sure who they've got in the pipeline for him because he didn't really mention anything. So I'm really looking forward to to seeing how a Jagba progresses with this his new coach and how is he gonna get any better or is this is this just the beginning of a downward spiral am i in denial is he gonna get it together or what's happening i hope he gets it together because yeah the past performances have been very 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 concerning in my opinion he did also double down on his Deontay Wilder comments and his Wilder's alleged African roots. Not, 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 not even African roots, Nigerian roots. Wilder's a very bizarre human being. He's been trying to claim Nigeria since AJ started. Well, AJ's been Nigerian from the jump, but you know, since AJ visited Nigeria, he's been trying to don all this African Nigerian attire and trying to claim that he's Nigerian too. Wow, there's a bizarre, bizarre, bizarre individual. So yeah, Jagbar kind of, kind of expresses disgust at Wilder trying to claim Nigeria, and he, Jagbar feels this um, because he lost to Tyson Fury. He's trying to find, you know, 
trying to look for um, someone to embrace him so if he feels the Nigerians are going to embrace him or Africans, Africans are going to embrace him for some reason that's what Jagba feels but the interviewer actually corrected him that no it's actually when Wilder no, noticed that um, AJ was visiting Nigeria and he had strong Nigeria roots and ties that's when Wilder wanted to develop his ties and roots in Nigeria too so he started putting on these these clothes <laughs> Anyways, let me know what you think of everything I said in this video and also a Jaguar's comments. Shout out to Boxing Block Center for the interview as well. Yeah, leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and do justice to the notification bell. I'm out.